In this episode of SNG Explains, we will talk about China's stapled visa. It is sometimes hard to imagine that a piece of paper stapled to a passport can cause so much diplomatic bad blood between two capitals. But China's decision to issue such staple visas for three martial artists from Arunachal Pradesh in July has once again underscored their fraught relationship. As you have guessed by now, a stapled visa is not the same as a visa stamped inside your passport. A stapled visa is China's way of telling India that Arunachal Pradesh is its territory, which it calls South Tibet. And the people on whose passport such a visa has been tacked on are Chinese citizens. I don't think this is a case of uh, strength or weakness. I think this is simply a case of, uh, for, of for India also to understand that China's behavior has increasingly become hostile and adversarial. Uh, these provocations are meant to indicate that. Uh, it's also recognition of the fact that um, there is uh, only so much that you can do in terms of force usage uh, along the LAC. Um, so there is there are different dimensions of making your claims through different means, through information warfare, to lawfare. And Beijing uses all these tools to try and put pressure on India while trying to make its claims uh, or territorial claims. So this is part of that strategy. I don't think it's a case of weakness or strength. It's part of using the entire toolkit, uh, which includes lawfare, which includes information warfare, um, to try and put pressure on India and stake claim on territory. China has been issuing such visas since 2005 to all Arunachal residents visiting that country, also to residents of Jammu and Kashmir. India has protested and cancelled such visits, including the martial artists. Critics say India should retaliate. Can there be other things that India does? I mean, look, there are lots of things that India is also doing to send messages to China, right? For recently, you had the Non-Aligned Movement Summit in which India uh, resisted the use of BRI and some of these term Chinese sort of language uh, in the summit communique. Um, India has been quite adamant when it comes to the G20 in terms of what the agenda should be. And despite Chinese disruptions and attempts at disruptions, it's continued to sort of put out uh, chair statements uh, while recognizing, acknowledging the fact that China and say Russia have been disruptive. So I think India has been doing its own things. Uh, it's engaging with Taiwan and Taiwanese companies, which we can continue to do. So I think we're doing our own things. Uh, diplomatically, I think India's style has generally been one of quiet diplomacy as opposed to necessarily too much public, you know, in intensified public posturing. Um, I think that some of that can change and some of that should change, particularly around uh, Taiwan. Uh, and Xinjiang. Um, but this is a matter of diplomatic style. The long and troubled history of India-China relations shows a constant misreading of Beijing's intentions, of political naivety and strategic blindness on Delhi's part. There are signs India is changing course, but India needs to be far more proactive and firm in dealing with China. Stay tuned for more such topics on SNG Explains. Watch our previous XNG Explains on our channel. We will be back with a new topic for you. Till then, keep watching Strat News Global. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.